Hello, athletes and fans of bodybuilding. Tarek El Gindi with the Mr. Olympia. Today, we have Dubai Pro Champion Terrence Ruffin. He's been a runner-up at the Mr. Olympia. He came back with a vengeance, like I told you so. And now a lot of people are talking about him being a threat for that title. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, Terrence Ruffin. Good morning. Good morning. How you guys doing today? Doing good, thank you. You see, you have a nice background uh, yeah, in really, Dubai, yeah, yeah. so congratulations. Looking fresh, just won the show. Also with us, one of my co-hosts. He is the four-time Arnold Classic champion, 1992 Mr. USA, known as the Sultan of Symmetry. Flex Wheeler, how are you? How often do you rehearse that, man? Or do it just roll yeah. off the time like that? I rehearse that, Flex, every day. <laughs> How are you? Looking good. He is in his uh, $1 million uh, Las Vegas mansion. Also yeah. with us, the 1987 national champion. He's the Ironman champion. He's the two-time Arnold Classic champion. His name is Sean Sugar Sean Ray. Can I say that, Sean? Sh Sean Sugar Sean Ray. <laughs> he put sugar in there twice because you asked this week. You asked this week. Working on it, Terry. <laughs> that was a legal defense. So if somebody says, did you say two-time Arnold champion? I also said two-time sugar, so I'm sorry. You know, it's my accent. Right on, baby. Uh, Sean, I'll start with you. Yes. You were in Dubai. You did the, the commentator with uh, uh, Chris Cormier and Sid. You saw uh, Terrence Ruffin. How good is this guy? Well, I, don't, I mean, if you listen back to the playback uh, on the play-by-play -play we were doing, um, I had Terrence as soon as he hit the stage. Um, some things you can see before it actually comes to fruition. He's clearly more impressive when he actually hits a pose. And historically, if you go back to a bodybuilder by the name of Tony Pearson, hmm. you see Tony was very slight, slender, very Frank Zanish, standing in clothes. You didn't even know he was a bodybuilder, um, which is the illusion of bodybuilding, which I can appreciate because several guys before me, like Samir Banu, uh, Lila Brada, these guys are very quiet unassuming people but when you put the oil on and they hit that standing relaxed pose or just throw up one bicep you just see all kinds of stuff happening and terrence wasn't a first runner up for no reason um he uh he was coming off of taking his lumps and sometimes you're better when you, you take your lumps on the olympia stage you have redemption on your mind um it was not an olympia lineup so he shined even more but he showed that what we saw when he was at his peak at the Olympia, is still there. And I know with this much time running up to the Olympia, it's just going to get better. Uh, I'm hoping that Terrence doesn't lose any more weight because he had the right amount of size. He had the right amount of, uh, of definition to win this contest. But there's still some refinement that he can do. I think he can work on the color a little bit more. But there's zero criticism I can actually give the guy. I mean, I'm talking about sharpening his color. I'm not talking about building up the bicep or widening the back or dialing in the abs. He, everything was there. And uh, I fully expected that because sometimes when you lose, it's the best medicine um, to come back and redeem yourself. I remember, you know, I can only relate to myself. My first Olympia, I was 13th. When I came back, I was third. So sometimes losing is a good, good opportunity for you to correct those small mistakes and then uh, step on the big stage. He definitely showed us that he's not a one night wonder. Uh, everything he got was deserved from start to finish. I'd be, you'd be hard pressed for me to hear one of those judges having him in second place at that show. Yeah. Now, um, so sorry. I want to go back to you, Sean. Do you believe that what he presented in Dubai was uh, better than when he placed runner-up to Chris Bumstead, or no? He was better when he placed runner-up to Chris Bumstead. No, I mean, I was I was at both shows. Clearly, <laughs> when he got runner-up to Chris Bumstead, uh, he was on another level. He missed his peak the following time, but um, he can get back there. He's on his way back there. He's very, very close to get. I'm criticizing Terrence about his color. I mean, we're talking about color, right? Like, that's the easiest mix that you can actually fix. I think you need to be a little bit more golden brown. I'm not sure how much you colored. I'm not sure if you had color on. But uh, the color just, I think it could be the lights. But definitely, uh, I'd like to see him a little bit more um, bronze. And it will make it, it will magnify what we're looking at. It's almost like looking at a Ferrari that doesn't have wax sitting next to one that's been waxed. So, my critique, Terrence, for what it's worth, is just work on the color. <laughs> okay, okay, I got you. Uh, Flex, uh, Terrence Ruffin 
you know, is, is beautiful to watch on stage, aesthetically pleasing. You know, he reminds me of yourself, Sean Ray, but, you know, he needs to battle a guy that's maybe bigger than him, uh, Chris Bumstead. Do you see any uh, similarity to what you guys had to do in terms of dealing with Dorian Yates? And if so, what would be his strategy? Nothing. I mean, bring his best in. I mean, you know, um, I was probably one of the weirdest guys to say, I can't control nobody else. I can barely have, you know, control over what I bring to the table. So why in the F would I worry about what another man is doing, what he's wearing, looking at his videos and his photos, because it can't do anything but destroy my my uh, myself. So don't do anything, man. Keep, you know, looking at Terrence beating Terrence. That's the only thing you can potentially do any less than that is is just an oxymoron i mean you're you're putting energy into something that just doesn't make any goddamn sense at all so ain't nothing broke on you just like sean said that's all and, and respectfully understand what Tra sean is really saying that's how petty he had to be as far as pick on your color because there was nothing else that's how petty so why in the f would you go off and try to better things like sean said you know you looked like you're approximate the right way Love the way you pose. It's just going to be a great matchup. I think, you know, Muhammad Ali versus his greatest opponent only made Muhammad Ali greater when he beat that opponent. You don't want to beat a lesser opponent. Like Sean said, it wasn't an Olympia lineup, but you did your job. You went in and you murdered everybody who was on stage. That's what you were supposed to do against a lesser lineup. So when they, uh, you know, you go up against a, a bigger man, you just bring your package. Bigger isn't better. Better is better. Hey, Chris, how are you? Thank you for joining us. 1993, uh, Mr. USA's four-time Iron, um, Ironman champion. Chris, you saw Terrence Ruffin. What do you think about this guy? Hello. Welcome. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I woke up like this. <laughs> hey, uh, <laughs> yeah, so now I thought he was very impressive. Um I thought the poses were, you know, the best he's ever done as far as like I've been watching, you know, a lot of his competitions over the years. I thought, you know, super polished posing. And I think that was a, one of the biggest things that you could see your experience up there uh, on display. And, uh, you know, we spoke backstage a little bit and you showed me a little preview before you went out. And I was like, man. Like you're in great shape right now. And I think it was good to uh, get a look at yourself on stage, you know, with the Olympia coming up, you have a, a, a better idea of what type of package you can bring there. But I yeah. thought, uh, you know, you could just, you could just see your experience. And uh, I thought, I thought the um, uh, Fabio had a, you know, had a, you know, a really good shot. Cause I saw him pose also. And I was like, man, it's going to be, you know, a pretty good little dog fight here. But uh, I know you're up for it. I know you that's what you want to do is to uh, uh, get a good little sparring session in before you go to the Olympia. And he as well wanted to see how he looked stacked up next to you. And, you know, that's what he said was to he wanted to get the better competition. He said he could have compete back in, I think, in Brazil. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but he said it'd be better to see what, you know, get his feet wet with someone like you and some of the other guys that was in the show. Um, uh, as, yeah, as, I really respected that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Um, not many people. I've literally seen people uh, back out of contests if I if I announce it too early. And mm -hmm. uh, that's yeah. why I, even with Dubai, I didn't announce it to maybe two or three weeks before. Um, so no, a lot of respect for him for, for coming out and, and because, and he beat some really good guys. I think Wesley placed eighth at the Olympia branch is not that great this past one, but Brent Shannon's placed up, um, top five before in the past. So, yeah. um, we beat some really good guys this uh, past weekend. So Chris, you know, I, uh, you and I saw Fabio in Tijuana. That's the show he won. I, uh, he turned pro with me in Brazil a few years ago and I judged him when he won his first show. But um, I think this was a great lesson for Fabio to compete against somebody that at this point of uh, his career is better. And I had a chance to talk to um, Fabio's coach. And it was great because uh, Terrence exposed some of, some of Fabio's weaknesses. 
One of them is his quads. Because he's so overpowering on top, you're almost missing a little bit of quads. And Terrence is a little bit more balanced. He's got the quads and the upper body. The second thing is Terrence clearly outposed them on the comparisons. You know, you would say that Fabio's best shot is back double biceps. Um, Terrence hits the pose first before him, you know, and you can see that Terrence was conditioned. Did you feel like Terrence outclassed uh, Fabio in terms of posing, in terms of experience? Um, at first, I thought, you know, I think uh, he was a lot closer at the beginning. But then as time wore on, uh, you could see that um, uh, Terrence poses were starting to uh, overwhelm everybody and, and your eyes are being drawn towards Terrence. Um, he did have a you know, great. it was super close in that back double. But then after a while, you know, after they hit some poses and came back again and hit some more poses next to each other, then I thought Tan started to just sprint ahead like that. You seen Boat coming, you know, at the last party, starting to sprint, sprint, sprint. You started to- You know, just, I had a, I had huh? a talk with a, a men's physique guy backstage about this. And um, a couple of years ago, I was getting, uh, and this is where the experience comes in. I was, I was, Getting, I was pumping up backstage for Olympia, then I saw Chris just sitting down doing nothing, and then I was like, "Let me, let me, let me do what he's doing." You know, he's missed Olympia. Let me <laughs> take a second, and then I started to realize, I'm like, okay, it's particularly at the Dubai Pro, um, they they wanted us to start pumping up when 212 was out, and you guys had no I know how long that show was. 212 was still doing individuals, so I don't know how many there was. Let's just say there's 20 of them, so each, that's 20 minutes. Of, of just individuals, then another like 10, 20 minutes of comparisons. Then you had 50 men's physique guys. So that's like an hour. So they wanted us to pump up over two hours beforehand. And I saw these guys. <laughs> you like, no. I'm like, I'm not, I'm like me having experience. I'm like this, we're not about to go on stage anytime soon. So I, I really think a lot of the guys just due to lack of experience, they, they pumped up so early. And by the time they got on stage, they look good in that first couple minutes. And then as we, cause I knew how Steve is, he's going to have us out there for a while. And as I started to get better and get harder, cause I didn't do all this stuff beforehand, they started to fade a bit. So I think that definitely helped out a bit as well. Yeah. Um, also in that twisted back shot, like, like I was, uh, I was noticing that Fabio was, was still breathing out of his stomach in that pose. And that was a big mistake on his part because everything else looked great except that part. And I've been noticing that on a, a few po uh, pros doing twisted shots and, you know, the stomach is not tucked away and, and tight. So, you know, that just comes with experience also, but that's some learning lessons for, uh, uh, for Fabio, you know, moving forward. And Chris, I think you bring up a good point. I would like to have the input of Flex Wheeler and Sean Ray on this. We had as an issue the, the stomach distension in bodybuilding, and we fought very hard to prevent that from happening. If you have any of that in classic, you are in big, big trouble. Big, big trouble. I mean, those guys are aesthetically pleasing. They do the vacuum. They're beautiful. Sean, I mean, if something is sticking out in classic, I don't know where to, I don't know what to tell them, right? Yeah, and, and I was with Chris. So that was something you cannot not unsee. Mm -hmm. um, and it's a mistake. It, it, it can be corrected with control of your breathing. It could be a rookie mistake. But at the same time, you got a guy like, like Terrence, who I was telling you, like Tony Pearson would be his bodybuilding equal, in my opinion. Um, and having that waist being the focal point of classic physique, you cannot let up. You cannot relax. You have to breathe uh, through your chest and through your nose. And when you relax, um, we can see it. And in, I think I made, there's one post I put on my social media. I think it was when you were winning in like the victory pose. And um, Flavio was doing like a twisting side back bicep shot. And the stomach is just totally relaxed. Rookie mistake. Um, you can't relax in that class physique. And again, that comes with experience. And that's why I said, um, you know, Terrence looked kind of like a regular guy when he walked up there, but everything was popping once he started posing, and and he's known more for his posing than his physique. 
So, I mean, you're going to go up against opposing, you know, expert, you better be ready to, to do your homework. And that's where I think uh, um, presentation can separate a, a winner from a loser. Yeah. And uh, I have here a posing video. Um, at times I thought maybe uh, Terrence and I saw the pictures. I, I didn't see the video that Terrence was not popping in the beginning of prejudging, but then he looked a little bit bigger by the end. Did you notice that, uh, Sean, that he got better in the end, that maybe in the beginning he wasn't popping as much? Very, yeah, again, that's where I was talking about, this is color? Something's not happening right here. But um, like a lot of physique artists, Labrada, McCowie, uh, Samir, you come alive when you start posing. And, and you spend all that time pumping up. You're not going to get bigger backstage when you're a little guy. I don't know. Looking at Terrence, I would say, I don't even think you're 180 pounds, are you? No, this is yeah. actually, I didn't want to tell people my weight going into the show, but this was the lightest I've been in like four years. It's a, um, it's and a it's pretty crazy, crazy um, because I've like, I've gotten a lot of comments saying, this is the best you look, you made so much improvements. And I'm like, I honestly, I, I think I might've talked to Chris about it. I was like, I kind of yeah, got him. Totally. Yeah. I didn't want to, I mean, if you didn't want to say nothing, I wasn't going to say nothing, but. No. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't, 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 nobody okay. gives about how much you weigh it's an illusion man because again muhammad mcaway two-time olympia runner-up lee lebrada two-time olympia runner-up i don't think they're over 180 pounds chris dickerson in 82 i think it was 180 mm -hmm. pounds Samir Benu. It, it's not a matter of what you weigh it's what you look like and that's what we want to stay focused on but you look small and then boom all of this stuff starts to happen and that's the beauty of class physique that's the beauty of uh, being a physique artist and don't don't get it twisted you don't have to go around saying you're a bodybuilder. Well, I never like, told us how much you weighed. Huh? You never told us how much you weighed. No, I, I never talked about weight because for me it didn't matter. I knew who I was up against. I mean, flex is two hundred. It didn't matter. Yeah, it didn't matter. So take the weight factor out of it. What you're doing is working for you, and don't get caught up Thank on that you. scale because uh, that that art of illusion is a, kind of a lost art on some people. You've honed in on it. It's working for you. Uh, Bumstead, six foot one, 200 and something pounds. You're in your own little thing. And mm -hmm. it's going to come down to you. The judges want this or the judges want that. You start changing this, you'll never catch that. On one given day, if he misses his peak, you can step in. You know, it's funny. I, I had a conversation, you know, with them raising the weight cap. Um, I think it actually could hurt a lot of guys because I think the reason why we saw so many class for you guys, you know, consistently in shape. It's because they had to suck down to make that weight. And I think um, some of the guys, that if, even at this show, they got that increase in weight and they thought, um, you know, let me just come in at the top of that weight limit and not come in shredded. And I think that really hurt a lot of people. Yeah, but, but more weight is not going to equal to a better physique. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah no, I, I, I agree with all of you, but still there's a, there's a cap. And I think a lot of the guys are going to push to the limit and um, uh, they're going – yeah and – there's there's a point where guys are gonna say, "Hey, I want to get bigger," and that might not mean necessarily better, right. like Sean is saying. But I think the increase is very minimum. You know, I I spoke on primetime muscle. It's not like these guys are gonna gain, you know, twenty pounds of muscle. But we're I mean, talking seven pounds, right? It's an increase of seven pounds. That's still, a for lot some of them, yeah. for some of them, Sean for. For a guy like Chris Bumstead is less than a pound, you know, because he his height has not, his weight cap has not. But I think Terrence is one of the few guys that you have plenty of space to play with. Is that correct, Terrence? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, lots of lots of room. So um, you know, we'll see how this this offseason goes. People uh, you know, obviously they they announced this like four weeks out from each contest for me. So, you know, I can't really do much with, with, with that, but, um, you know, obviously, you know, always the first thing is always bringing a package that looks aesthetic. It looks, you know, right. You know, I've, I'm a, I'm a fan of, uh, of bodybuilding first. And I've seen so many guys that I, I look up to talk about, they chase size and they lost the, they lost the, uh, the shape they liked. Even Jay Culler said it. Jay Culler said he preferred his older physiques compared to the ones where he wanted Mr. Olympia. You know, um, I've, I'm, I'm close with Lila Brada. He um, he also says the same thing. He pushed his weight up too high one time. He didn't like his look, and he dropped it back down the next year. So, um, you know, I pay attention to history, and, um, you know, we'll see how I look a little heavier next year, if it looks good, you know, good. If not, 
Hey, Terrence, there's always a segment in my uh, shows which I call losing followers. <laughs> if you, if I'd rather you be honest. One physique, Sean Ray, Chris oh. Cormier, Flex Wheeler, which physique would you pick? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm not even getting involved. No, no, no. You would probably go with mine because I had something that was more, I was more like a classic guy because Flex got too heavy. Sean was just too small. So I'll, just, I'll help you with that, brother. <laughs> the pressure of too was, no pressure. I was like a dwarf up there. And you <laughs> no, I'll go in a different tangent here. Terrence, um, you know, Obviously, a lot of the young competitors coming in in the classic physique are looking at you and they're saying, man, you know, one day I want to be in the top five. I want to be runner up. I want to win the classic. Last year, it was a disappointment for yourself because, you know, everybody's expecting Terrence Ruffin to be in the top five. I mean, yeah. to be one of the best. And you, you did not perform as well as you have done in the past. It was a disappointment. But you didn't seem impacted. Talk to us a little bit about handling this adversity and really coming back with a vengeance. I mean, I, I, I knew what the issue was. Um, and, you know, I, I knew I could, I could fix it. I knew how to fix it. Um, it definitely sucks, uh, obviously. But um, I'm not the one. I'm not one to dwell on, like, bad things. I'm the one that, that like, once that, something bad happens, I like to move forward and try to fix it as quickly as I can. So... Uh, you know, this is the start of me fixing it, you know, um, like you said, like, you know, people say, oh, he's, he's back, he's back. And I'm like, personally, this win was, you know, awesome. Um, but like you said, I, I, no one that beat me at the Olympia was at this show. So, you know, I still have a lot to, to prove to myself at least, you know, um, what did something happen or was it just, the, the we just it was that way? It was just me trying to do too much. So like I'm I'm always always the person that thinks I can do everything all at once. I you know started a new coaching business. Um, my fiance came like 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 mid prep, and that's a whole lot for you know um, from a whole different country. So like not only is she's coming to the you know stay with me, but like learning to live together that's not the best. Um, <laughs> having to fire a coach like the day before, um, found out. I wish they would not have told me this till after the after the show, but I, they told me that she was like stealing money uh, from my business, so I had to like fire her. So um, just learning that, um, taking a step back for certain things, prioritize certain things. So that's why this prep here. I came out to the you know Dubai three weeks early. I shut everything down business wise, you know, early, and um, you know it paid off. Yeah. Yeah, you have to learn to just roll. Let things just roll off your shoulders. When uh, when something happens, especially close to the show, yeah, it's just like you don't even the house is burning down. Uh, well, I have to figure out that when I get home, don't I? You know, just, yeah, yeah, the mindset. But I, Terrence, I have a question for you because you know the classic physique is so popular. I judge shows all over the world, and classic is very popular. Uh, when you play well at the Olympia, the hype comes after you. When you went, won the Arnold and you placed second at the uh, Olympia, I mean, the hype was so real that people are paying you to go to places to teach posing. I was at the Olympia Amateur in Romania, and you were there for the seminar. Um, does it change with today's game, not placing well and maybe losing a little bit of that hype, maybe, you know, all of a sudden, everybody's talking about Ramon, Ertz, Kalachinsky, and then supplement companies come after them, and then maybe you feel impacted, or in your case, you really don't care about what's going on in terms of social media or any of that hype. Um, I'm at a pretty pretty good place, especially career-wise. Like, I have the most pro wins in classic physique. I have the most Arnold Classic wins. Uh, one of the younger pro, youngest pros in history. I've been at the Olympia every single year since it began. So, you know, I feel like I'm pretty well established. And um, I guess the only bad thing is, like, um, social media-wise, like, the the following kind of slowed down a bit. But my contracts are already in place. Um, my my sponsors are very happy with what I'm doing. So um, financially, not a huge deal, um, especially when the, the, other, the other top guys, none of them live in the States. 
Um, and Chris doesn't go anywhere or do anything. Uh, so I'm still literally the only person people can bring places unless they want to pay someone to fly from Germany or Brazil or, you know. So, I, uh, no, it didn't really affect me uh, financially. Mm -hmm. Flex, you're one of the guys that always teaches the young guys and mentor them. Hey, your time to make money is now, right? Um, you know, contracts don't mean a lot. You need to keep reinventing yourself. Um, Terrence seems to be a guy that's, you know, profiting from his career and continues to innovate himself. Do you think that now placings have a impact on your bottom line or you think you just got to keep reinventing yourself regardless of the placings? Yeah, I mean, obviously it can help, but we also know that there has been previous champions who were multiple winners and didn't do well at, at all financially. So it's just making yourself uh, and continuously reinventing yourself. But you have previous Miss Olympia winners that probably didn't, um, you know, travel as much as me, Sean and Chris back in our days. So that don't really matter anything. You, you need to make yourself an it factor. So um, if you're in a crowd of people, there has to be a specific reason why people are, are drawn to you. Uh, that's called a draw. So when you're talking about contracts or even, you know, going to seminars, you have to understand why are they hiring you? Are you a draw? Are you going to pull in people? A lot of times, you know, uh, not always, but a, a, um, a, a placing doesn't always do that. But if you have so like Terrence is just different, right? Regardless of whether he was a winning his, uh, uh, category, a person in his category, he will still have that it factor because the way he carries himself, uh, he's a student of the game. and He's also a master poser. So, I mean, the truth is, you know, it's kind of like back we used to say about, um, uh, geez, what's our little brother? Um, gosh, one of the probably best posers in history, Mel, uh, Mel, Melvin. So we always knew, Melvin, and me yeah. and Sean would always preach to Melvin, man, don't worry about that. Dude, you, you can handle your business posing. It didn't matter whether he won shows or not. He was a great poser. So even now, Melvin's able to come back to the game and, and have influence in posing. So no. You know, Terrence had that it factor. It didn't matter whether he'd be winning or not. I don't think he'd be able to pull one penny more uh, if he wasn't winning uh, just because of what he brings to the table uh, as far as posing. And like you said, he's aware of it. This uh, doesn't I, go I, nowhere. Everybody else is out of the country. I'm the only cat, so I can pick my price and I can leave the house when I want. But go get that money. Like we're talking offline, that phone won't always ring. Well, you know, one of those days you'd be having to wear a suit you know, like Chris, because uh, he don't want to show what he looks like. And, you know, Sean would be wearing these little, you know, like uh, nipple hugger shirts and all that stuff. But uh, no, all, all joking aside, By the way, all those things must come to an end. You must continue yes, reinventing sir. yourself like all three of us on this camera right now. We don't compete anymore, but we reinvented ourselves so we can still get a check. Well, I can tell yes. you, uh -oh. back, back in our day, um, two of the more successful guys that were not champions, but were all over the place. And were fan favorites were Mike Matarazzo and yeah. the Mike, Mike Quinn. Those were two very popular posers that were entertainers. They, they didn't have it on your level, but they survived and they thrived in an industry where they were coming up against some genetic animals that were winning everything, and they weren't winning anything. But yet they created a man because uh, they, they were entertaining. They had this, like Chris said, they had an it factor about them. No, yeah, I really, no. no I, like I really respect you guys. Like, um, I, like again, like I pay attention to all this stuff. Like, um, bodybuilders retiring and then like not having anything to show from it. But you guys are definitely ones to look up to. And you know, you guys have had supplement brands, like gym equipment. You guys are on the on the show here. You guys have made deals with like Mutant. It's it's really really awesome to see um, things like this. Like you can still have a place in bodybuilding even after you retire and still make money after you retire if, if you know what you're doing. Absolutely. Sean Ray, we want to give a shout out to Mutant is one of our Olympia sponsors. Sean Ray is representing Mutant. If you don't buy supplements from Mutant, chances are you're a chicken, right, Sean? Well, absolutely. And Terrence, you have a, a, a personal invitation following the Olympia two weeks afterwards to come out to Hawaii for our second Classic pro physique. Someone segue. A ten thousand dollar. Sean's gonna pay for the flight. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> well, Chris, it is an expensive Sean's flight. Sean's gonna yeah. pay for the flight for you. Come get that money. Play <laughs> <laughs> on the beach, Chris. Knows Just in one hand out the other. Sean's gonna pay for the flight. I'll see you I mean, there. Chris, you're not coming. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, on that topic, on that topic, Terrence, uh, it looks like you're not done prior to the Olympia. It looks like you are doing more competitions. Is that correct? Or you keep yeah. it a secret? Why not? No, no, no. Um, I'm actually, uh, we're, my coaching company is sponsoring the, the Legion uh, Sports Fest. So that was the first, that was the original show I planned to do. But then they announced, you know, 20K here in, in Dubai. So I was like, let me uh, make a trip out to Dubai. And, uh, you know, and, you know, if any uh, young athletes are watching, like, um, I think, you know, sometimes you don't always get like the, the amount of money you, you want from a contract, but there's other things you can add to a contract. And a lot of times what I typically do is um, either have, I would like, I'll always have the company match my prize earnings. So it always makes, you know, things a little bit better um, when I compete. And um, so, yeah, this was a really good, really good weekend for me. But um, yeah, we're sponsoring the sports, uh, the Legion Sports Fest, Iron Dean Coach Company. Um, so I'll be there. I also do an appearance, I think, after the show. So you can come see me, the trophy, everything. Yeah. And the mustache. And the mustache. You know, honestly, I, my wife, my wife doesn't really like it. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, it's definitely, definitely not gonna. It's definitely not gonna. Be that woman. Longer. Let's find out about the history. Which black bodybuilder sported a mustache on the bodybuilding stage before class physique? For my history, I, I did. You did. Robbie Robinson Ooh. did. Well, yeah. didn't uh, uh, Aaron? Aaron? Um, Phil Buchanan. Aaron yeah. Phil Buchanan. Huh? Brian, Brian Buchanan. It, Brian Buchanan. Tell Brian the, Buchanan wife, tell the wife to send you to the to get your professional trim and then I think she might yeah, like it a little better. Yeah, right know. now you're giving off that Eddie Murphy-ish type <laughs> of with that head hat backwards. You're not the first person to say it, so you get it fast. Get hey, it. I'm not gonna fall for the banana the tailpipe trick. Say that. <laughs> you're matching up with Bumstead on the mustache right now. Honestly, you know what? I, you know, people told me to try it and like that's I, that's probably why I won, you know, just the mustache. It's really classic, you know? Hey, Ter uh, Terrence, are you doing anything different? Are you trying anything different for the Legion Sports Festival or, you know, same prep? Or, you know, are you changing anything in terms of your, your final days of preparation? Are you trying for a different look so you can test it prior to the Olympia? Or are you sticking with the same thing that you did in Dubai? We'll try something a little different, I think. Um Especially like this was my so uh, my the tanning company here. I've never used their tan before, but uh, after what Sean said, maybe I won't I won't go with them anymore. Um, but I was uh, I definitely wanted to see because I'm, I'm sponsored by a company already, and I've used them for the entire time I've been a pro. And sometimes you know me being a darker guy, I'm like, okay, maybe I need to try something different because the I've even talked to the guys at the Arnold, and they say sometimes like they need to find a darker guy to test the lights on because go with um, the pros pro tan go with the pros i won't say it i don't <laughs> want to say that's that's what they use at dubai but you know that's what they use here okay but i get like it's a different it's a different group of people so it could you know the deprecation could be different because i know this is only the second year they've they've um they've had this show so the, the lights were good though <laughs> <laughs> I gotta tell you, Eddie parents. Murphy is a handsome man. I don't know why y'all. Yeah, yeah it's not a, it's not a dig. I was just making out. <laughs> I gotta find one with the hat, Terrence. But <laughs> I mean, yeah. the yeah. Halloween is <laughs> Halloween is coming up. All we, do, <laughs> all we need to do is get you like maybe the Beverly Hills sunglasses and everything. Yeah. <laughs> I could dress up like that. That could be my my uh, my costume for the year. Yes, absolutely. Derek, you can be uh, Nick Nolte. Nick Nolte. <laughs> Yo, Fred, Freddie Mercury from with Green. the hair. There you go. With oh the hair. my God, Freddie Mercury. I need it needs a little, a little bit thicker for Freddie. <laughs> oh, I, I I grow a mustache yeah. and then I can't fly through TSA, man. I, yeah. I grew my beard and the guys are like calling <laughs> random on me every time. I'm like, dude, I'm flying to San Diego from <laughs> Ontario. You look like a terrorist. You're in the se second, uh, you're in the second customs. The second I, day. I had to shave it. I said, man, I can't fly with this beard. So, um, I like to thank the TSA. I will shave every single time now. So now they're letting me in all the time. So 
I I'm back on the game. So, um, well, I got to tell you guys, I think Terrence Ruffin, I, I, Chris and I spoke on Primetime Muscle. I, I feel passionate about, you know, I would say protecting the competitors that sometimes get attacked on internet or maybe don't get the publicity. And a lot of times the competitors, they say, I don't really care about it. But I thought it was very, very unfair, very unintelligent of a lot of people to be discarding the fact that Terrence Ruffin is one of the best classic physique guys. Um, everybody talking about Chris, uh, Ramon, Urs, um, and then a lot of people forgetting about the fact that this guy was a runner-up, this guy won the Arnold, and this guy just had one show that he didn't perform well. And uh, Chris and I were passionate about it, right? Saying it's plain stupid to ignore the fact that Terrence is one of the best in the world. It's normal for people to jump off the bandwagon. Yeah, um, yeah. People are waiting for you to fall. They're waiting for you to stumble. And as soon as you fall, as soon as you stumble, you're done. Um, I remember Chris, when Chris, I told Chris he'd never beat me as a bodybuilder. And he beat me in 1999. He, he wrote me off. A teenager. He wrote me off. <laughs> And so I said, never to beat me again. that's in my mind every time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hey, Terrence, my advice is you don't have to lose any more weight. I mean, you're okay. right where you need to be weight-wise, so don't even pay attention really to the scale. Just keep refining. The posing is where you, you shine. Um, work on the detail a little bit more. You can always be a little bit more harder. Everybody can be. Yeah. Just don't overdo it because when you lose the muscle, you're going to get too flat. So hang yeah. on to that size as you continue to peak. Don't forget to eat. Well, the, the key question is, if Terrence Ruffin has the ability to put 10 more pounds of muscle yeah. without compromising his lines... He will. <laughs> that he can't is, do it. That waist Terrence, is very he small. Do it. He's too short to put... A, he's like, Mohammed bin Aziza tried that, and it didn't work. It backfired. But when he was close to his lightest weight, you know, he was up there beating Dorian Yates. These little guys can't put 10 more pounds on and expect to have the same line. You know... No one's been successful. I've heard, you know, the thing, the thing I find funny is I had a conversation with a friend, a friend of mine about this. It's like when, in my opinion, I find that like when shorter guys start to get really heavy, like heavier, then everyone wants to write them off and say, hey, you, you're 212. You need to switch to 212. But I've not once seen a guy like 5, 10 or above ever, like when they get to their weight cap, when they get to the break, then no one ever says you need to switch it open for them. So. It is a little strange, like that that um, that that duality there. That um, but we all you know, have regrets. Is. All like this, we all have regrets when we come in heavier, and then we go try to go back to what worked. It, it doesn't work, Terry. Do. It doesn't translate. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a difference uh, when when it comes to that much height, um, especially between you and Chris. You know, you're talking like, mm -hmm. you know, a five thousand square foot uh, house. You know, trying to put on a 2,000 square foot lot, it's just not going to happen. Versus, if you have a 10,000 square foot lot, you can add seven onto that and still have three more to grow. So it doesn't always when they when they add these weight categories. And I think you're right. One of the reasons why you guys categories always came in so crisp because everybody had to diet down and get that. Um, now that they've taken that away, even you said it, you thought that a lot of guys probably tried to push the scale, thinking again that old dumb mentality bigger is better and it isn't just better is better so I, I don't really care what you do as long as you continue beating the, the Terrence that just won a competition that way you'll never go wrong because that Terrence can match up against anybody else in a category then you go against Tarek and uh, uh Terrence in the um in the Olympia when you did it yeah yeah 2017 yeah you went up against uh oh you Tarek battled. you guys battled. Tarek got so when you got next to flex how did you feel did you really like I'm gonna just smash this guy and put him back in retirement. Oh, oh so honestly, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's pretty crazy. I get to say I get to say I was on stage with Flex Wheeler. That's that's fucking badass, honestly, oh man. God. Hey, um, good, good beating the hell out of Flex. It really does. <laughs> honestly, it's not. <laughs> hey, Terry, hey, 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 no, no, no. <laughs> take take it, take it, because these two gentlemen. Between the two of them, they didn't do nothing with me. So take that victory, brother. Run around. Hey, it's all good. It's all good. Because what they're really saying is you got that you got to do something that they didn't really get to do that well in their whole career. What? So it's all good, brother. It's all good. Come on, Flex. Don't put that narrative out there. We're trying to tell the truth. Though. We we're nothing but like, the facts. Like carrot cake. 
Carrot cake. I love carrot cake, man. Jeez. Everybody knows hey, kids love cakes. I, I got to tell you something. That's a pretty honorable thing to – I don't care what happened, but to be on stage with Flex Wheeler is an amazing, amazing thing. And Especially although, to spank him so viciously. It's like – I felt like Muhammad Ali, man. If you love me, you don't have to beat me like that. You don't have to beat me in a ring. <laughs> hey, but, do, but Terrence, do you have different mindsets behind – your pose that you choose to do when a certain competitor is is next to you does that go yeah. through your mind or do you, do you just a you little bit less now but um that like I've, i spent a lot of years trying to make my physique very very balanced but in the early parts of my career i was my legs were very very dominant um and i needed really needed to bring up my arms and so if i was standing next to Breon, like who has some crazy biceps i'm not gonna hit a bicep pose next to him i'm gonna do like a, <laughs> Like a side I always side noticed side. that. I was like, man, yeah. this guy, <laughs> yeah, elusive. Pay attention, yeah. Yeah, Brian. And to correct you, Chris, though, man, I was always that was a, a great battle to see, and uh, and and like you said, uh, you know, the different shots that you choose, you know, it makes it makes a big difference. Chris, I want to correct you. I did so poorly. He never got a chance to stand next to me to smash me anyway. So yeah, <laughs> take that one. Who? <laughs> <laughs> no. I never got called out with Terrence because I wasn't good enough. So he oh didn't even get a chance to smash Let's me. Let's just I, say I you were in the show. You had the trunks on. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Look at you. I, I, you know, That's this a crazy guy, pose there. This guy, Terrence Ruffin, is pure uh, brilliant. And I think uh, Sean Ray said on the Dubai uh, Pro uh, commentating, he said the art of displaying the physique and – Terrence Ruffin is just beautiful to watch on stage. I think he's the best poser of our generation, um, and I think he has a chance. Let's see what he does within the next Mr. Olympias. I think he has a chance to possibly supersede Mohamed Makawi. I consider Mohamed Makawi the greatest poser of all times, but I think Terrence has a chance to eventually surpass him if he continues to do artwork uh, on stage. This guy has everything that you want in terms of posing and his physique is incredible you turned pro at the nationals what year terrence oh 2014 what classic classic wasn't even around um at, the, at that time terrence. and your category was you were no but you were light um i was a lightweight yeah I was lightweight a guy. lightweight yeah. look terrence, at it terrence what you you also myself included I'm going to put myself in there, too. Uh, <laughs> worked with uh, Robbie Robinson at some point, which you're posing, and and had a chance to be around him. We we, we spoke about this a couple of times, but what yeah. what, did, what did you take from that those sessions with him, and how did it help you uh, moving forward in your what you installed in your own pose in your own career? I remember the first the – first couple messages he would send me would I would be posing he's like tuck the thumbs that'd be the only thing he'll in all caps on Instagram <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah that's, he got that installed in, in, instilled in me also for sure that's all yeah yeah he, no Robbie was awesome man and like um I it was a blessing like um then we did a, a shoot with Nebia maybe two years ago the only only downside was I had just had surgery so I wasn't I didn't look the way I wanted to look to, when I was posing with him but um no, nah, it was it was one of the best experiences of my life, you know. Um, and uh, no, nah, he, he was great. You know, having again the posing in the train with him was actually really cool. Like yeah. a lot of you know, a lot of those guys, a lot of guys today, they they write off like training of the old school guys, saying, "Oh, we know so much more now." But I tell you, yeah. like they know a lot, like because they tried everything, they, and you know, like these days, exactly. people don't try anything. Exactly. You know? And people and people try to go from not learning anything to trying to do ex very experienced movements, very experienced mindset. When there's a pecking order to, of, of somewhat to, there's beginning training, there's methods as the intermediate, immediate trainer, and then there's experts, and then there's legendary stuff. But mm -hmm. I mean, these guys trying to go from zero to a hundred when, you know, they get a lot of information all the time. We didn't get that type of information back then but I've trained, you know, with Robbie and, you know, as a teenager and moving on into my career, uh, even even towards the end of my career. But uh, you may have gotten those type of letters, but he used to handwrite me a whole letter. 
Wow, no, I, I didn't get any of those. those things. I wish I still had those things, but Rob used to write a whole letter. Even when I go into battle, when I go to compete, he would give me a letter, like, and then I, it's like it being fully, fully done with all kinds of inspiring, inspiring uh, messages and things to think about. And he just had me like, like a, I was like a soldier up there, man. Just it, like, it, parents, after that, Chris would call me up to read him what Robbie had wrote. Yeah, right. <laughs> Back in the day. Crazy. No, that's, that's Crazy. Awesome. Um, <laughs> Crazy. And also, well, hey, hey, you got also you got to shout out Java Labs because Java Labs is uh, also going to be sponsoring Olympia. So we got to make a shout out for Java Labs. Sounds good. Sounds good. Yava Labs, thank you for the support. The Mr. Olympia is coming up. It's going to be on the first week of November, Orlando, Florida. Congratulations to all the competitors. The last show, I believe, to qualify for the Mr. Olympia here in the United States is going to be the Legion Sports Festival, mm -hmm. which um, Terrence Ruffin has confirmed he'll be there. Flex, are you going to be uh, at the Legion Sports Festival? What's the date? It's uh, 7th and 8th of October. Wow. Um, I'll be in Huntington Beach to uh, see some content, actually. So, no, I won't be there. Uh, Sean, are you going to be there representing Mutant? No, I've, I've been at that show the past couple of years, but I'm just coming off of trips to Hawaii and to Dubai, and I'm leaving tomorrow for Florida, uh, Daytona, Florida. They have a, a pro-am show that I'm seeing. So I'm going to take a break. Rest up for a couple of weeks, uh, actually a few weeks, and then uh, I wind up out in Switzerland, uh, October 22nd, to MC the Swiss Grand Prix. Of course, then after that, I'll meet you guys out in uh, Orlando, Florida, for the Big O. 59 years, and mind you, let's let's not forget the 60th anniversary of the Olympia will take place in Las Vegas next year, and we got to start talking about that because that's going to be a big milestone, man. We're going to have a definitely big reunion of champions at that Olympia weekend. Uh, in Vegas in 2024. Perfect. Chris, are you going to be at Legion Sports Festival I'm or are you you're doing camp. your European tour? I'm going to be in camp with uh, Breon and uh, we are, you know, trying to bring a great package for that Olympia. So I'm going to be, we're going to be in lockdown for the next, for the next month. He's training someone to try to beat you, Terrence. That's what he's doing. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> Terrence ain't going to fall for the banana tailpipe trick, huh? Shout out to Breon Ansley, who also is going to the Olympia. Breon, we all love you. If you need a better coach, Flex and Sean, we have recommendations. <laughs> My name is Tarek Elgindi with the Mr. Olympia. Once again, what a pleasure to have Terrence Ruffin. Some yeah. competitors go on stage and they compete. Some present beautiful art, and that is the legacy of Terrence Ruffin, one of the greatest posers of all times. And in my opinion, he has the chance to become the greatest poser of all times. Let's see what he has in store for us. Terrence, thank you so much for joining us. We got the all-star cast. Because you're here, we brought some of the legends for you. No, I appreciate Thanks, it. Man. Anytime I get to talk to these guys, it's a blessing. No, it's, it's really, really cool. You know. <laughs> Congratulations on your victory and good luck on your next shows. I want to thank my hosts. First, four-time Arnold Classic champion, 1992 Mr. USA's Flex Wheeler. 1987 national champion, Arnold Classic champion, yeah. Ironman champion, Sean Ray. Older. And uh, 1993, <laughs> Mr. USA's four-time Arnold Classic. Oh, no, you never won that. Uh, um, uh, um, Ironman champion. I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Actually, I did. Oh, hey, I did man, mean. I made a mistake. Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm oh, sorry. Flex, <laughs> I made a mistake. <laughs> Sean, I made a mistake. My you apologies. You see how they do me? <laughs> I want to apologize on that. Because your eye test told I you I did win. That's why. I did not mean to call him the Buffalo Bills of the Arnold Classic. <laughs> Anyways, uh, my name is Tarek Elgindi, and we will see you next oh, live. We got a big surprise on the next live. We'll see you next time. Ladies and gentlemen.